Hey, thanks for joining. And thanks to NPM for featuring this channel on their NPM Weekly. Uh, I got all dressed up for you. Um, so last week, uh, there was an article on ZDNet. Uh, study shows programmers will take the easy way out and not implement proper password security. Uh, this is a very, very interesting article. Uh, turns out there was a study that uh, hired 43 people and asked them to create a registration form for a fake social network just to see how they would implement password security. Uh, and out of these 43 people, seven used Bcrypt and five used PBKDF2, which is pretty good. Uh, five used SHA-256, uh, one used SHA-1, uh, 10 used MD5, and eight used Base64. That's, Base64 is not a, an appropriate password uh, encoding algorithm. Actually, you shouldn't be encoding passwords at all. You should be transforming them in a way that prevents them from being untransformed back to the original data. The people who used Base64 almost seem willfully deceptive uh, or dangerously overconfident uh, because that is just not an appropriate algorithm at all. 18 people also didn't even use password hashing at all. They just stored their password in plain text and those projects were rejected and told to be resubmitted. So I thought this would be a great time to talk about password security as it relates to Node and JavaScript. So let's get to it. Cryptographically secure hashes are useful for a number of things, but one of their most common uses is comparing two chunks of data when you either don't want to compare the data directly or it is not appropriate to compare the data directly for whatever reason. Uh, so two examples of that, where if you want to compare uh, the contents of two files without comparing each byte directly. Uh, so it might be that you're comparing to see two PDFs are the same or two certificates are the same, something like that. Uh, and then there's comparing to see whether or not two passwords are the same. So let's say you log in on a line, uh, sign up form, uh, you enter your password in there. Uh, you don't want to store that password in plain text because you don't want your employees in the company having visibility of everyone's password because that's just creepy and wrong for a bunch of different reasons. Um, and when a user signs in again, you want to be able to compare the password they're giving then to make sure it was the same password they used when they signed up. Those two scenarios are extremely common, but there's a very, very big difference that separates them. When you're comparing uh, files and certificates or anything like that, you want that to be extremely fast, especially if you're trying to compare lots of files or, or some small sets of files very, very frequently. Um, with passwords though, you actually want that to be fairly slow. Now, that might seem kind of strange for anyone who's not embedded in that sort of space, um, but it's a really, really important aspect for how we protect passwords and accounts. When people talk about cracking passwords, they're not talking about taking a hash and undoing it into the password or transforming it back into the password. What they're talking about is iterating through all possible password combinations or a dictionary list or something like that to find out which password results in that hash. So if you're using a very, very fast hash, it makes it much easier to brute force crack a password. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about two different uh, algorithms which, which you could probably use either, uh, Bcrypt and PBKDF2. Uh, PBKDF2 stands for Password-Based Key Derivation Function 2. And Bcrypt stands for, I think, a blowfish crypt or something like that. Um, they, both of those algorithms embed within them the idea of having a sliding computational scale that allows a developer to choose how computationally complex the hashing is going to be in order to make sure that it is uh, slow enough to still be useful as a, as a hashing algorithm but not so slow that it impedes an application's user experience. That might sound kind of strange, um, and it is, but I found that the best way to visualize this is to just run a program and see it. We're not gonna be diving down into the, the, the algorithm details itself because one, I don't really want to, 
I don't find cryptography to be overwhelmingly interesting. And two, uh, I think it's actually probably better that most people don't understand the algorithms behind these things, because once you start to understand enough, it might make you confident enough to do things that you shouldn't do with cryptography. Cryptography, one of the reasons why I'm not uh, super interested in it is that it requires a much more rigorous scientific mind. And I'm more of a hacky get stuff done sort of guy. And I like that bubble, that's where I stay. And uh, I recognize my boundaries. I'm gonna run these programs before showing you how they work, uh, just so you can see the effects of the cost parameter in the execution. Here we're gonna be hashing a fixed password, Hunter2 with bcrypt and an incrementing cost. So you can see how uh, increasing the cost increases the time to generate the hash. You'll notice that uh, one through 10 are almost imperceptibly fast when you take into account uh, how an application works. But as soon as you start getting past 10, uh, this, the slowdown is substantial and noticeable. Now we're gonna be using PBKDF2. So PBKDF2, you'll notice, also scales a lot more linearly. Bcrypt is exponential. You'll also notice that the cost values in PBKDF2 are substantially higher than in Bcrypt, and they're just used differently. You will not be at all ever dealing with a cost of 150000 in Bcrypt. That's just not going to work for you. So Bcrypt is available as a node package. And then there are two functions that you're going to be dealing with. You're going to be dealing with GenSalt and Hash. Uh, I'm using Promisify because it makes dealing with those functions easier. Um, and that way we can use async await syntax. I'm also logging the performance of generating the salt and generating the hash so you can see the difference. And you can see it's the hash generation that's expensive, not the salt generation. So to generate the salt, uh, we pass the cost into gen salt. And then we just pass that salt with our password to the hash function. And then we get a bcrypt hash. It's very simple. PBKDF2 is available as part of node core in the crypto module. Um, that requires that you generate your own salt, which means that you'll also have to store your salt. Just like with Bcrypt, we're using Promisify here, so we can use async await. And Promisify, if you have never used it for Promisify, if you want to call it that, uh, is a utility function in the util library of Node that allows you to translate any callback style method into uh, a method that returns a promise, so it's more easily usable with the async await syntax. So for PBKDF2, it's one function we have to deal with. We uh, pass it a password, the salt we generated, the cost, which uh, should probably start at about 100,000 for most applications, uh, the length of the key that we want to generate, and the digest we want to use in order to generate that. I'm defaulting to SHA-512 right now, um, but you have the ability to use whatever digests uh, are available on your system. Um, we're outputting the string as hex to make it easily uh, usable, and that's it. Properly managing your passwords in JavaScript applications or any application is not complicated. You don't really have to do a tremendous amount of research and do these comparisons. Um, but I definitely understand how it is a very, very complicated topic for people who don't necessarily understand the implications of their choices. Um, and that's, it really comes down to how we protect passwords and accounts. And uh, security in general, actually, is just, it's a cost versus value uh, justification to perform any attack. Whenever you're attacking something, you need to be getting more value out of it than it costs to perform the attack. When we apply cryptographic functions like bcrypt and pbkdf2, um, that allows us to embed the cost of this attack in our storage of the data. And that allows us to, uh, to figure out what cost is appropriate for the data we're storing in order to make it less practical to brute force. Anyway, the gist of this is when storing passwords, Never, ever, 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 ever store them in plain text. Never store them in a format that can be translated back to the original uh, data, like Base64 or even anything encrypted that can be decrypted. Um, don't use MD5 for just about anything, really. Uh, don't use SHA-1, don't use a SHA family unless you know, you know what? Don't use SHA. Use Bcrypt with a cost factor of at least 12-ish, or PBKDF with a cost factor of 
probably around 100,000 to start. Uh, you tweak those for your application. Uh, the important part is to just not make them too low. So that's a password security in a very, very small nutshell. Um, there's a lot more to it and I might have glossed over some things that I probably should have explained a little bit more deeply, but for the sake of simplicity and, and the fact that I'm just generally issuing guidelines with pass password security, um, that's, that's enough for now. Uh, if you like this stuff, um, there's a, the subscribe button, which allow you to get um, my videos in your feed, your YouTube feed. Uh, there's a like button, which is helpful. It lets me know that this is something that was valuable to you. And there's the notification bell if you really, really like this stuff and you want to be notified when they pop up again. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate all of you who actually see these things uh, because it, it's just, it's a strange format to, to just talk to you and to have you see me, um, but for us not to interact. I would like to interact with you. And if you want to interact with me, please interact with me. I'm available on Twitter at JS Overson. You can send me emails at jaredoverson.com. Uh, you can leave comments here um, on YouTube and I will get to every single one of them as long as they're not mean. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Uh, for the rest of this uh, video, I'm going to be calling it Peanut Butter Kelly Diff 2 because PBKDF2 is just